The following video was something I looked forward to for a multitude of reasons, some of which I'll share with you before we begin. It's an interview with a CEO and co-founder that brings an enormous amount of experience to the space. First, it was the vision. Identifying the potential of blockchain and cryptocurrency with mining Bitcoin, Litecoin, and Doge as early as 2013. And then in 2014 was the head of growth at Stellar.org, onboarding 4 million onto the network just months before they launched. Payments is the area of expertise here. And Ripple, through their investment arm Spring, invested in this team. And IBM used their blockchain infrastructure to transform payments for Worldwire. A founding team member of Square, Randy Redding, co-founders of Bancorp, SoFi, and Marketa, along with many others, have invested and or advising currently the team that has a tremendous amount of strength and doing some amazing build out. They are well on their way. And I'm so pleased to introduce to you my guest, Tammy Camp, CEO and co-founder of Stronghold. Stronghold today announces a rewards program for their technology partners and business customers to enhance the payment infrastructure with a token SHX. This token in the next 24 hours will also be listed on a major exchange. There is a lot going on here. Do enjoy. Hey, hey, everybody, it's Eddie from Tokyo. This is your cryptocurrency update. Well, yeah, cryptocurrency update, but a little bit more special than that. I have Tammy Camp. She is the CEO of Stronghold. And I just can't wait to get in with her of what she is doing in this space. And you must realize that she is one that has been in this space very, very early. In fact, she was mining Bitcoin, Litecoin, and Dogecoin with components in 2013. Uh, I just told her before we hit the record button, that's one of the big things I'm most impressed with. And that is because she was in early and was able to really identify the value of this space. So I want to just ask her all these questions because she's in the middle of really building out her growth. She's in a growth stage that is really uh, significant. And you must also know something else. She was head of growth for Stellar in 2014. She was able to bring 4 million people onto the network, I think in a month. She'll tell me if I've got that right or not. But if we uh, just let her tell you about what she is doing, I'd asked her first to explain what Stronghold is all about as if she was talking to someone who had absolutely no idea about blockchain or crypto. And then also tell us about Stronghold as if she was speaking to someone who's very savvy in this space. So Tammy, welcome, welcome. I want you to uh, give us what you are doing. What is Stronghold? Well, first of all, I would... I just want to say thank you so much for having me. Um, I'm really honored to be on your show. Um, and what's up with Stronghold? Uh, so, you know, to, to someone that isn't um, in the blockchain or crypto space, we just, you know, we just say that Stronghold really is a, you know, payments and financial services company that that moves payments in the most efficient way um, through a simple API. So we really just route payments. Um, if I were talking to a crypto savvy um, participant, well, it's a little different. Um, you know, we really identify with you know being a payments infrastructure company, and our mission, our core mission, is to provide fast, secure, and accessible financial services for all. Um, we have a suite of de developer APIs, and we really focus on the interoperability between legacy payment systems, um, like within the United States, it would be ACH, within, you know, uh, in Europe, it would be uh, SEPA, to 
more next generation financial services. So that would be things like Interledger or Ripple or Seller or Bitcoin or Ethereum and all these new fascinating networks that we have. They need to be, uh, they need to be connected. They need to be interoperable. Um, and that's what we do through a simple API. Um, we, uh, you know, allow our businesses to transact within our network um, in any way that they want in the most efficient way possible uh, to route payments for real-time settlement. Um, and, you know, we also have a rewards program for our businesses, and we also have um, merchant cash advances through decentralized finance. Yeah, so it's a lot. And I think for the audience of this channel, I think many of them followed you quite well on that explanation. It makes sense to me. So you received, I just want to touch on it briefly because uh, you received a, an investment from RippleX. And I just want to hear a little bit more about that. Yeah, um, we, we received the investment uh, a couple of years ago, yeah. And we're just now starting to um, bring that to light. But uh, yeah, my co-founder, Sean, actually, uh, you know, we started Sean Hold in 2017, but he was actually an early Ripple gateway in 2013. Uh, coupled with that, uh, with my experience with being the first head of growth at Stellar, we were one of the few teams out there that have really been looking at this space and this type of payment technology um, the longest. Like, so I think that that was something that was very unique about us that we have previously you know, run businesses on top of these types of uh, payment blockchains. Um, and, you know, we were really thrilled to have, um, you know, Ripple X make that investment into Stronghold. Yeah. And I think for people who might not know Ripple X, um, I mean, you were, you were invested when it was spring, right? And it's it changed the name for Ripple X. Yeah, that's good. And you also, something when I uh, was really checking into what you were doing, you have IBM. Well, IBM has used you as a partner in, in your blockchain infrastructure, which is interesting because you help them transform their payments with a, I know it's a, it's a totally separate project, but you actually have experience in creating a stable coin for them, for their requirements that they were, that they were using. Is that, is that right? It's interesting. Yeah, that's right. Um, one of our first customers out the gate with Stronghold uh, was IBM and, and quite frankly, what's really unique about Stronghold is that we're still one of the few fintechs that are a, a you know, a vendor of IBM. That's, that's incredibly hard to get. Um, but what a lovely experience. They, um, at the time, they were building a, a, a network, a closed loop network called IBM Worldwire. And we were able to provide that infrastructure um, that settled real time between uh, financial institutions. Um, and it was a great experience. We learned a ton, um, a, a ton about um, regulatory technology. And I, I think that that's what excites me the most about, um, you know, these types of technology is that you can actually program the regulatory frameworks that you come up with into the technology. So I used to say that, you know, it's safer than cash. So um, yeah, we, we, we learned a ton. We're super honored and, and uh, you know, just had a great time uh, working with IBM. Yeah, I remember uh, I saw that you were on a panel when you were working that, I think, in the beginning, and you used that We Are Safer Than Cash. I think Jesse Lund was doing, uh, was working with you, or at least he was on the panel with you. I watched a lot of his videos, too, when he was active with Worldwire, so it was fun to see. I, I was surprised. Uh, yeah, it was, it was uh, good to see that. So this stablecoin is just for um, was just for Worldwire, and it was uh, something that was custodied, and and um, yeah. So, but now you're kind of you're you're building out in this ecosystem with something that's called S S H X, right? This yeah. is a this is something that you're using for the cross border liquidity for payments. 
uh, something like 100 billion, but not all have been distributed yet. Please stop me if I'm wrong on any of that. But it, I think what I want to know, and I think what everyone wants to know, is it like comparable to XRP? Um, so it's, it's very different. Like it has some similarities and it has a lot of differences. So I think for on-demand liquidity, um, it's very different. I think that, um, for example, like the Ripple audience the, or ODL focuses on cross-border payments. Um, and, and that's, you know, very much where we came from, but we're doing something completely different, <laughs> which is super exciting because, um, you know, payments isn't just about the cross-border space. There are so many payments that, um, or so many markets and verticals that you can serve. There are so many people out there that need financial access. And, um, and what we've done is we've actually, you know, created a network of businesses here within, um, you know, our ecosystem. Um, actually, we have over 130 businesses using our payments platform. And we basically have introduced SHX into the ecosystem as a method um, for rewards. So anytime a business uses our payment processing, which is traditional, right? We do traditional and we do uh, modern, but anybody who uses our traditional payment uh, uh, rails like credit cards or ACH, when they use our payment method, they actually get rewarded in our token. So, you know, they're super excited about that. Um, and it's a great uh, loyalty mechanism. Yeah, I can understand that it uh, functions that way. And, and I'm sure it's an added value for anybody who's using a service that they need to use. But you get this added value on top of that to use the royalty. It's fantastic. I can, I, I like the business model a lot. So um, you have some prominent industry advisors and investors. I was pretty impressed. Why don't you just talk about it in brief with the audience here? Oh, wow. Um, <laughs> we're very grateful to have the folks around the table um, that we do. If you would have asked me, you know, when I first started Stronghold, if I would have had this roster, I would have, you know, I would have never believed you. But um, I think a lot of people have really you know, met our team and knows that we we're heads down executing. Um, and when, you know, folks, uh, you know, our operators, they see that and they get super excited because it, I think it's super rare to be able to, um, you know, saying thing is saying, um, saying something, you're going to do something is one thing, but then actually executing on it and, and executing it to success is, um, is, is something else. And so, you know, along the way, we've picked up um, well, you know, they've actually helped us um, in industry veterans like we have, um, you know, all of the founders of the bank corp, the bank corp is uh, the, the bank that actually powers a lot of the neo banks like Chime. Um, so uh, Frank, Mastrangelo, Betsy Cohen. Um, we also have folks um, that are on the founding team of Square, like Randy Reddick. Um, oh, we also yeah. have... Um, uh, Jason Gardner, who is the founder and CEO of Marketa, who just went public four weeks ago. I, I think they're valued at a $15 billion valuation. He's around the table too. Um, we have, um, I, you know, I can go, I can go and we have the founder of Nerd Wallet. We have, um, you know, one of the founders of SoFi. We have, um, you know, Rob Stavis, which is a, a partner at Bessemer Venture Partners, uh, which is one of the oldest uh, venture partners, uh, uh, venture funds uh, for over a hundred year, hundred years. Um, and, and, and lastly, you know, we, we even have um, Arthur Steinmetz, which was the former uh, chief investment officer at Oppenheimer Funds. He was there for over 30 years. So that's, you know, that's pretty, pretty amazing. We're, we're, we're so lucky to have all the folks around the table because they really are helping us now as we start to scale the business. Yeah, Tammy, it's impressive. I was quite impressed. So I'm glad you shared that with everybody. Uh, I also was taking, you know, I, I was doing my research and I saw that the SH token, the SHX 
token has 9,545 trust lines. I said, wow, that's a lot. <laughs> I just want to know what more can you tell me there? Like, uh, Well, we're growing. So, so in the time that, you know, you did your research, what was probably two nights ago um, to now, you know, we have over 10,200 trust lines. So it's, it's growing. I mean, we're, we have so much momentum and, um, you know, it's such a amazing community um, in on Twitter and also in Discord that are, um, you know, that are that are really just committed to, to seeing the success of our ecosystem. Um, it's it's pretty incredible. We have um, those folks that are, you know, within those communities as well as our businesses. Remember, we have we have real customers and real payment volumes and real businesses, and their customers are using. Um, the, you know, our payment processing to process their payments. So there's just a lot of people touching, um, you know, touching what we do. All the touch points. Yeah, yeah I can yeah. see that. And I think that, um, you know, that kind of growth is just really shows that the company is um, probably going to be very, very successful. You're, you're, you're out of these, what I would call startup phase. You're in definitely to a solid, growth phase right now. Yeah, yeah. really good. Yeah. And so if I understand correctly, um, since you started the rewards program, and it's and it's based on the payment volumes that your customers do that they receive this, uh, this SHX, and they are basically a B to B B to C, right? It, in many of the many of the workflows, go from business to business and then to customer. That's right. Think of it like Stripe, or think of it like Square. Um, um, just to make it kind of simple, uh, we can think of it like Square. So we're the, we're the payment processor. The payments are embedded into a point of sale. Um, those businesses that need the point of sale are our customers. But when a person goes into the store and they want to purchase um, a good, like goods or service, a cup of coffee, you know, they need to swipe the card. So that is That's the retail side, customer. right? And so um, it's this is payments, right? If you look at Visa, Mastercard, and you look at these models, they're you know three-party transaction model, four-party transaction models. This is very much what we're doing. We are building out a network. Um, that touches a lot of, of people, right? And so, um, yeah, it is a B to B to C model. Yeah, it's, uh, that's, yeah, just so I can wrap my head around it. Is there any geographical locations that you tend to concentrate in? I mean, is it domestic? Is it international? Is it, or is it just a mix of both? Um, for the payments, yeah, it's, you know, right now we're pretty heavily focused, um, you know, within uh, the United States, but we are expanding out. Um, of course, we want to expand out because there are so many problems to solve. Um, and, you know, for example, just e-commerce, e-commerce and, you know, what we've experienced in 2020 has made the world so much tighter and connected in some ways. Now I can, you know, actually one of my favorite stores it is like, is, um, uh, a home goods store in Japan. So I can, yeah, I can Muji. buy. Is it Muji? Uh, no, it's, uh, I, I don't want to say it because I think I'll butcher the name. I think it's a, oh. uh, Yamakaze. Uh, I don't know that one. Yeah, we, there's a lot of really good ones here. And so um, they, they probably uh, have, have created a really successful international online presence. Yeah, but Muji is one that yeah, has I, brick and mortars, but there's a lot of good ones here. I do love Muji though. I am a big, big Muji fan <laughs> for sure. Um, but, but to your point is that, you know, this is, you know, e-commerce has made, or the access to um, it, digitizing payments via e-commerce has enabled us to have access to things that we would have never had before you know i'm i'm purchasing things from you know japanese stores all the time um and you know we're looking to expand um particularly in 
the com the you know the commerce space um you know globally it's 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 a go global space yeah the the uh the current situation that the globe has gone through has really accelerated everybody knows this digital uh, way to transact, but it has um, been really good for blockchain and payments in particular. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's right. And then so back to your question of, you know, how are we different um, from ODL? Like, I think that, you know, ODL very much, you know, kind of focuses on, you know, cross-border payments. Mm -hmm. I'd say that we like Stronghold really focuses on commerce. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. If you think commerce, commerce is payments, commerce is rewards, program commerce is um, financial services for those businesses. Um, and, and that's, you know, what our suite of products supports. Yeah. So segments yeah. and sectors, but with interoperability in that's mind, I, I think I, yeah, I'm getting it. Um, I had also wanted to know that the asset holders, uh, you're, you have a roadmap, I'm sure. And so you're, you've got some goals. I would love to know, like, how many asset holders are you shooting for in the next, I don't know, one year or two? I'm just yeah. curious. Yeah, so um, our goal is, is I think it's pretty modest, but you know, I, we're going to have a million asset holders by 2023. Um, we're growing, you know, Three four hundred percent month over month at this point with our asset. I think we're probably going to get there sooner, um, but it is you know our one of our internal company goals to have um, you know a million SHX asset holders by twenty twenty three. Well, the fact that you did it with Stellar, you know, brought four million people on. What was the time frame you did that? Four months. It was it was in four within four months. Four months. Right. But onboarding a million people a month is like um, it's unbelievable, actually. Yeah. I mean, I know a lot of pro probably people. I you know um, when I was there, I was doing the the Facebook airdrops. Oh. Um, I don't know if you remember that, or I'm sure a lot of your viewers do if they have been around the space and that. And so. Um, you're you're looking at the person, um, you know, one of the, the the folks on the team that was, um, you know, that was that was, um, you know, part of that. Yeah, airdrops are still um, growing. It's really an interesting distribution model. So you probably are you going to do more drops with SHX? Yeah. So um, you know, we actually incentivize a lot of activity within our ecosystem. So anytime you know, the rewards program is very much it's it's very similar to that. So um, you know, for any business that kind of transacts through our um, our traditional payment um, processing, they actually get SHX, which is on the new rails. Um, and so you know. Everybody has to transact, so I, you know that that is our new form of doing um, of doing airdrops, if you will. Um, we actually it, it is the rewards program, so we're we're just super excited about it because you know we've had we've had businesses literally stop their operations and say, wait, what? Uh, and then them just turn on you know our payment processing and then them operationalize that within. You know, within their business, just so they can, um, you know, get access to um, to our rewards program, the SHX token. Yeah, you're really responsible. If we look back in history, you know, just if we look back at what you're doing now, ten years from now, you're really instrumental in providing uh, mass adoption to the digital space, and I, I respect that a lot. I really do. Yeah. Yeah. It's wonderful. I'm, I'm, I'd love to see this ecosystem grow in all those different verticals and, and ways to bring people in. So I just want to say thank you from someone who's in this space. Yeah. I just want to say thank you. We're going to make it happen. <laughs> well, we are making it happen. Okay. So here's, here's, here's a question I want to ask you because I was, uh, you know, snooping around. <laughs> and I see that you are possibly going to do some maybe financial services with DeFi. Uh, but I also saw that you have helped Hugo 
at Flair because you've got Hugo's picture on your website and he is thanking you for solving a complex problem that he had. And I was like, what? What is this? And I really want to know, what is this? And, and, and <laughs> are you going to do maybe smart contracts on Flair? I mean, those, that, I know those are probably two questions that you probably won't want to give the dirty details to, but I want to know a little bit. Um, Hugo, what a amazing person. I guess I could say that I knew Hugo before he was famous. Yeah. So I'm <laughs> Happy about that. That's funny. Um, you know, we actually met uh, because Ripple's also an investor in Flare, um, like Ripple is an investor in Stronghold. And so um, during the X Spring days and some of those X Spring developer summits, um, you know, we, you know, some of the, por the portfolio companies got together and we got to spend a lot of time um, with Hugo right? Um, before Hugo was Hugo. Um, so he's always been building, you know, super bright, obviously charming um, and, um, you know, great technologist. And so, uh, yeah, we, you know, again, we, we route payments. So we've, we've helped um, Hugo out with payments in the past. Um, and it, you know, it's great as, as it relates to, um, you know, us providing uh, merchant cash advances for our existing business partners, you know, there are there is a lot of demand for that type of product, and I think you know decentralized centralized finance is really good method to kind of get that um, capital to those businesses, and yeah, so we're considering um, a number of uh, you know smart contract networks because we have to and. And, and um, yeah, Flair is definitely among uh, the ones that we're, we're, we're evaluating right now. We would love to, obviously we've worked with Hugo in the past, we would love to um, do that again um, in the future. It's just, you know, we're, it's, it's TVD, um, so we'll, we'll see. Yeah, I, being a person that really loves uh what they are doing in building out their platform and partners that they're bringing on. I really do believe in, in uh, their kind of ideology, their philosophy, their, um, what they are trying to create, why they're trying to create it. So I hope that you do choose Flair. That would be wonderful. Um, yeah. I think- we will, But just to, just to kind of like, you know, to, we will use the best technology um, you know, we'll use the best technology that is the right fit for our, our customers. Yeah, I know you have to be, <laughs> as, a, as a CEO of any company, you have to be agnostic because you have to go with what is best for the people who are uh, supporting you. I understand that, but I would love to I see. see. That announcement. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I wouldn't doubt that what he is doing is going to be, you know, one of the best of breeds out there for his technology. So I, I, that part, that part of the equation, I'm not so worried about. Um, well, the last question I had was that, uh, that IBM panel you spoke on, it was interesting for me. And that was back in 2019, because you talked about at that time, the biggest barrier was the regulatory side for I think this whole space, you know, and we're really seeing that play out recently with the passing of the infrastructure bill in the United States. And also there's a new chairman, we've got Gensler in. And so we've got this kind of new mood and new narrative coming out. And I just want to know what your thoughts are today. I mean, do you feel a positive about it? Do you feel scared, negative, pessimistic? I, you know, I just, I'm really curious how you feel. I think, you know, probably similar to what I said on that panel, I, um, I think regulatory um, guidance is a good thing, right? It shows that we are maturing as an ecosystem, that people are paying attention enough to even care about, you know, what we're doing. So it's that interesting. That's, that's true innovation right there. Um, and people just want more clarity 
it's not, you know, we're, the more clarity that we have, the more, um, you know, we can operate within those guidelines. You know, I think that what I was probably mentioning in that panel is that, you know, there, there, there is a, a, a lack of clarity, right? So, um, you know, people in, if, you know, in the case of some other larger organizations, you know, that are public companies, you can't move and you have a whole regulatory department, you can't move as quickly because it's unknown. Um, larger companies can adopt things uh, faster if they are known. Right. Um, so that's, um, you know, I, I think it's a great thing uh, if, you know, more people and more, uh, you know, we have more regulatory um, folks coming around the table and, and kind of giving um, guidance to the industry as a whole. Yeah, well, they are paying attention. And I do think that the uh, situation that happened with the infrastructure bill created a closer bond among a lot of uh, protocols and, and chains out there that realize that the education is really a big step. And I think, I think it's a team effort. And I think, um, yeah, I, I think we're, I'm feeling positive, even though the unsure times are ahead. I, do, I agree with you, the fact that they're paying attention and the fact that regulatory clarity seems to be coming is going to help everybody's growth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It'll well, allow us to adopt more, yeah. Yeah, so, and, and it validates the, the, it validates too what these um, solutions are, are bringing in terms of solving the issues with technology. So, okay, Tammy, just, I, I, I went through all the questions that I had. Uh, please, please tell us maybe something that I forgot to ask or anything that you want to be sure to let the audience know. Yeah. Um, well, one thing is that we did uh, release an updated SHX overview on our website last week. Mm -hmm. uh, so you, anyone of your viewers can go and um, and check it out there. Um, What's the URL? How do they find it? Stronghold.co slash slash SHX. Okay. Stronghold.co forward slash SHX. That's okay. correct. Um, so the, that's there for everyone to see. We'd love feedback on it. Um, and then just to kind of close it out, I, you know, I think one of the last interviews I've done maybe was maybe 18 months ago. And, and I'm so happy to be kind of, you know, coming out uh, with you. And I, we've just been busy and we've been heads down. And I just want to say that, you know, we're, we're, we're not a startup anymore. You know, we're, we're a growth stage company. Um, we we're not a company that's going to, that's saying that we're going to build something on blockchain. We have built something on blockchain. We have, you know, over 130 business customers and growing quite quickly. Um, and so we're just super excited to, you know, be a part, you know, it's just, it's so exciting to see, you know, something go from startup phase to growth phase. And we're just, um, you know, super honored to, uh, you know, have such a, a wonderful community around us. And we just can't wait to, to grow with everyone. Yeah, I'm going to be paying attention for sure, of course. I mean, and, and I would hope that you come back onto the channel uh, after uh, maybe six months to give us an update as to how things are going. I'd love to keep in touch with you. And um, because obviously you are doing a lot of interesting things and you and the, just the growth we've seen in the last few days when you go from 9,500 trust lines to over 10,000 uh, in a matter of two days, it's, it's those numbers. I, I want to see if, you know, yeah. where you're at a year from now too, in terms of your uh your user base and and the whole ecosystem itself are you active on twitter you said discord and twitter that's right that's right um the company's url is at stronghold pay um and my personal url is at uh tammy camp on twitter tammy camp at camp tammy camp 
on Twitter. Yeah. On Twitter. Yeah. yeah. Good, good, good. Well, I thank you so much for coming. I really do appreciate your time. Having us. Yeah. Um, and and uh, I can't think of anything more than just congratulations and good luck and keep doing what you're doing. Come up for air once in a while because I know when when you're building, you have a you, which is which is why you've been successful. You've really had this uh, ethic to get it done. But come up for air once in a while and say hi, and I'll <laughs> see you again on the channel soon. Thank you so much, Yuri. All right. Take care. Cheers.